Good morning. Oh, I tell you, we, Joe and I are sitting in the audience, <laughs> oh, feedback, nudging each other about we couldn't have asked for a better tee up than that previous conversation. So we're, our minds were blown, but we're a little bit excited about digging into that. Um, so I am Lisa Nikolai with Ampersand. Uh, media and for those of you who are not as familiar with my brand as you are with Joe's brand, uh, Ampersand is a media technology company. We sell television advertising. We're owned by Comcast, Charter, and Cox. And what that means for us and for Joe is that we're able to provide him with over 80 million households uh, for his media, 100 million TVs, over 42 million households with return path data where we have viewership insights which add perfectly to what I would ask our friend that just spoke to add our television to that column, as we find that to be a very interesting piece of your ROI. And then Joe with Hillspad, of course, you're familiar. You want to talk just a little bit about your role before we jump in? Yeah, so um, Hills Pet is probably the biggest pet food company that you've never heard of. Um, our brands are science diet and prescription diet. We, we're in specialty retail distribution. So for, for us, that we have to make a lot of choices about where we advertise and who we advertise to. Um, I lead the um, analytics team. So we, we work with external companies and a team of data scientists to do the type of work that we've, we've just heard described. Yeah, absolutely. And listen, I, I got to read two little things for you, and I've got to look at my notes so that I don't misread this. Uh, one of the things I was interested to talk about with Joe is, you know, a disruptor. So in keeping with our summit, it's a person or thing that interrupts an event or a process by causing radical change in an existing or existing model or market by means of innovation. And I can't think of anybody who's doing it better right now than Joe. And I feel a little bit like the duck on the pond. It looks really smooth and how we got to this stage, but underneath those feet are working like crazy. So it's been quite a journey to get here. And we'll just jump right in and get started with the deeper part of the conversation. So the common questions and what we were even referring to in the previous uh, talk was, you know, what does it mean to be audience first? How do you fit your audience with a data strategy? And how do I measure true ROI? And that's the architecture and the test we've been building together for quite some time. Um, I know we're both disruptors. We tend to be in good trouble from time to time, pushing the envelope, but there's not a more exciting time or place to be doing that at this moment. And not to do too much humble brag or, or to put you on the spot too much, but the next definition I looked up for us was a pioneer. So a pioneer is someone who sees potential, an innovator who is willing to try new things, and a pioneer pushes the boundaries to advance a cause or an idea that leads the way for others to follow. And I think within your own company, right, because you're, you're amidst a big crowd there, yeah. you've really been the tip of the spear. I mean, talk for us just a little bit about how you get all those people on board. Well, I, I think to take a step back, I mean, for, for Hills, it's been a bit of a history. I, I came to work for, I'm from the UK. I came over from England in the middle of the Blue Buffalo Storm. So Hills has been around 50 plus years, um, you know, big, respected brand, not necessarily spending a ton on media, you know, and that, that was kind of the first thing I did was to um, launch a market mix model and to evaluate what are all the things that we're doing and what are the things that we can stop doing. And, and, you know, that was tough because, you know, people love their own programs. People loved having in-store demonstrators and handing out coupons. And, you know, despite the fact that we were saying these aren't very profitable, they really held on to it. And, and you know, it was through making a series of tough choices, we had to do that as a team rather than this coming from a, an external, internal consultant. And, and I think it's by bringing the team along with us that we've, we've really been able to make the changes. Yeah, and it seemed to work. I mean, you guys have been just killing it. I mean, you're saying it's a brand that's never heard of, but you're, you're experiencing some great success. I, and I, I think, you know, really the key for us, traditionally the thought was, as Hills, we're, we're professionally recommended. We don't need to necessarily have media. And, and, you know, for a long time we were trying to argue, I was trying to argue that if we took that recommendation and coupled it with media, we would see much greater success. You know, when five years ago, a lot of our media was really focused on bottom of the funnel tactics. You know, people who are spending on digital display, social, digital video. You know, we were getting close to TV, but we weren't there. And, and the real struggle was how do we get people to experiment? 
So we had very careful measurement. The, the struggle that I had was we, I would show people ROIs that were saying, well, you know, addressable TV is very close to digital video. People would say, well, why do I need to gamble? It's not, it's not proven. And I think that's, that's really been the key to working with Ampersand is having that really hard evidence that we can, we can make changes. The, the real key was to move away from just looking at things from an ROI basis. Um, you know, because we've got a very careful measure on impressions, we could link that to households. And instead of just measuring for, for doing the ROI on sales, we could actually say, okay, what are the things that can make us grow? And I, I think that's been the transformation for us. And, you know, we've been able to re-engineer the business to think about what grows the business rather than what's super efficient in terms of media. Yeah, I t and I th it's been a, such an interesting journey for us as we've been partnering through us. What setting up the, the clean room and the access to data to, and to viewership insights that really take that ROI understanding to the next level and, and back up with true science and true data what you've been theorizing about. So it's led the way, I think, for us to start to understand, look, you know, we talk about test and learn and everyone wants to do it until you have to do it, all right? Um, and then you've got to validate that with your company and, and get approval for that budget. And that's outside of what you were already planning. And then you've got to get your agency's approval and they've been planning for other things. So as we're starting to see in this industry, we're, we're turning that cruise ship, right? A yeah. little at a time. Um, and this walk, run, crawl, let's say, <laughs> crawl, walk, uh, run that we've kind of started as a learning agenda, those valuable insights that fit, I, keep, I can't lose the, the conference, the talk before this because it was just so relevant, is that the first kind of insights when you looked at this holistically that you start to saw were really around audience. So talk about how you... What jumped out at you when you were able to start to look at holistically streaming plus addressable um, and all the other media tactics that you were using? Yeah, I mean, the, the, the holy grail for me is, is being able to have, take um, impression level data against transaction level data. We don't have a D2C business. I mean, I, I tried really hard to persuade our CEO to start a D2C business just so that we had the data, and we, didn't, we couldn't get there. So, you know, we, we went down the route of buying third party data. Um, I also realized that there was an opportunity to take this to some of our retail partners. You know, we, we work with retailers that aren't as big as Amazon and don't have as access to a wider range of category purchases and ne never will. So we saw this as an opportunity to, to really take our audience strategy to the next level by collaborating with our retail partners. Um, and, you know, we took the approach of we could help them, they could help us. You know, the challenge that we've had in the last couple of years is our, our whole industry has been growing 20% a year, and, and we've been growing ahead of that. Um, you know, we, we really have had a good pandemic, dare I say it. But, um, you know, the next challenge that you get is how, how do you keep that growth going? Yeah. And, and it was an opportunity for partnership through, through really zeroing in on... on who are the people that look like the, the current customers that our retailers have that we think are, are convertible? And starting to, you know, the insights of actually we can go out, we can serve these people on three screens at the same time. You know, we, we can start to get to the, the cost of acquisition cost and lifetime value that we've, you know, been, been hoping for for a long time has, has been a real game changer for us. Yeah, and it has been, you know, throughout our partnership and, and getting really excited about some of the insights that you're saying, we start to look at and understand, although it sounds simple, it's not easy, right? To say that we need similar audiences across all these channels that have been so walled for so long that sometimes you even had separate agencies working on that, you had separate definitions, and when we really started looking at, let's dig into ROI and to start to understand ROAS, one of the consistent themes that we started working on together was Let's define that audience and see if we can't start building a segmentation of audiences across all those platforms that are at least similar or tied together in somewhat, yeah. some fashion, so we could really measure it. Because we're, we've got to the first goalpost, and now we've got to understand yeah. beyond that to keep, again, to retain your loyal customers and, and get new ones. And, and there's so many times you think you're talking about the same metric even. Oh my even gosh. when we're working with our retail partners of, of you know, if, if we're acquiring a new household, is that their valuation of the household for our brand or is it in total or, or what is it? Yeah, and I would even say, you know, one of the challenges that 
that Joe, who's built a, an amazing team, I just say, um, that we love working with is even, you know, even the te terminology. I mean, you were mentioning about the acronyms, you know, to when you come from a digital mindset and you're starting to look at TV analytics, which is ginormous. 42 million households is a lot of information. And to start to understand that and analyze that with our, with our help and support, but even the same words, addressable is not used the same everywhere. Advanced TV is not used the same everywhere. You know, there's different terminology. So we've really started, I think, groundbreaking work together as educating all of our partners into let's, let's agree on the same terminology. Yeah. Let's agree on the same metrics so that we can replicate the success that you've had in addressability across, across all your platforms. And I, I think the biggest takeaway from that is, is you know, it, it's sometimes in those sessions, it's, it's the smartest people in the room who are asking the most basic questions of just let me make sure I understand this. And, and I think working on that solid foundation has really helped us. Yeah, I agree. It's helped us as well to be talking about the same thing because you, you know, you take for granted that you're in your own circle. I know what I know. So I assume you're talking about the same thing. And I, you know, I looked around the room on one, on one of our days and I thought, oh, let me define what an MVPD is <laughs> because we have people coming from such a different world. We're speaking different languages. And sometimes you have to be at a certain comfort level to ask those questions. But, you know, it's, I think it's paying big dividends for you thus far. And I'm excited to see what we're going to do next in the future. Uh, absolutely. And I think, you know, we, we're just at the start. We're, we're really at that stage of, you know, our first set of experiments are in. We, we, we've calculated the results. We're very happy. You know, now it's like, okay, what does 23, 24, 25 look like in terms of planning? You know, there's a lot to do. There's a lot of work ahead. Um, yeah. um, thank you so much for joining us for this conversation. Thank it's you. just a pleasure to work with you.